where most games focus on the main character taking the fight to a ton of enemies, Way of the Passive Fist is happy to let the enemies come to you. It's quite a different experience, and while you might think that would create a passive game, it doesn't. Combat is precise, and the game throws a lot of enemies at you. Way of the Passive Fist revolves around parrying enemies' attacks. It reminds me of the Batman series of games where it gives you an indication of the attack and you need to press a button to counter. It's just as precise too, you need to parry in a certain time frame or else it will be late and you'll take half damage. If you do get the exact frame, then it will be a perfect parry for double the points. So having a combat system where you're waiting for enemies to attack you, does it work? Yes, it does. While you do need to wait for them to attack, you can force the issue by getting closer to them. So there's a lot less time waiting than you might think. Also, the game usually has multiple enemies on the screen, so you'll be switching targets constantly. Positioning is very important too. You must be facing the correct way or your parry will not work. On some levels, this is easier than others and the enemies are fairly good about attacking one at a time. The levels where it's a problem are when the environment tries to kill you as well and forces you to move around a lot more. For example, when rocks fall from the sky. It can be a little weird when you get basically inside an enemy to know which way to face, and that can be kind of annoying. One thing to note is that while you're playing, you'll start building up a combo. The higher the combo, the higher the multiplier for each score you gain. If you want to get a good score, then you need to get a high combo. The other payoff for gaining combos is your special skill. After a certain amount of combo, you can power punch, but it takes time to wind that attack up, so you have to be a bit picky when you use it. It's a requirement when fighting bosses though. Other enemies will keep spawning, allow you to build up your combo to hit the boss. It's really great, it puts the main mechanic front and center and works really well. The boss fights are not so easy. All of the combat feels pretty good and the controls are responsive. It's nice that the game is a bit forgiving but still punishes you with the late parry. There's plenty to keep it interesting as the enemies all have different patterns and keep cycling in and out. It's a lot to keep in your mind. They have recolored enemies which kinda sucks but they use the same pattern at a different speed. It actually works since your mind isn't prepared for the speed difference. Also, some enemies throw weapons at you. While you can parry it, using a dodge will catch and throw the projectile back. Pretty cool. If you enjoy this or not, definitely comes down to if you can find satisfaction from your dominance of the controls. Do you appreciate games that reward you with precision? Did you find the counter system in Batman Arkham Asylum to be fun? In way of the passive fist, I really enjoyed hitting those parries and coming out of a fight with no damage taken. It can turn into one of those games where you must get perfection and replay levels over and over and over again searching for it. Well anyway, the game is broken up into 10 chapters and each have several scenes where the actual fighting happens. At the end of each scene, you're given a medal based on score, bronze, silver, or gold. Pumping up that combo is key to getting that high score. A gold medal doesn't mean perfection though, which kind of irks me. You can have one enemy attack you repeatedly until you get a high combo and you'll get the gold medal. It's a bit odd that it can be cheesed like this. There is a time bonus which negates some of this because building up the combo on one enemy takes a long time, but the bonus XP from them having a gold medal is much larger. Still, if you play it right, it's satisfying to get the gold medal because you know that you blocked most of the attacks. One of the coolest parts of the game is how you set the difficulty. Okay, yeah, strange, I know, but there are four settings you can adjust that will affect it. Enemy Strength, Encounters, Combo Master, and Resourcefulness. Each is explained as you move the slider, and I think it's a great way to set the game to your preferences. Much better than the standard Easy, Medium, and Hard, which usually you have no idea the difference between. However, it's a missed opportunity to reward the player that can handle the game at the maximum settings. 
No matter what you set the difficulty to, it doesn't affect how you gain score in Way of the Pacifist. So while I enjoyed the combat, there are a few things that bring the whole experience down. First, the selection of enemies is pretty small. It gets tiresome that they recycle enemies so much. I'm sorry, I, I can't really count the color variations as different enemies, even if they improve the gameplay. For me, it's just barely good enough. Second, there are not many mechanics. All the combat is pretty much the same. Also, I don't think the dodge is utilized enough. Another fundamental problem with this kind of game is that you will need to see the pattern to learn it. It's obvious, but you don't realize how bad it can be when you're stuck trying to learn the pattern of an enemy. They'll keep kicking your ass and you'll have to replay sections. So if you're the type of person that will get tired of taking damage that is uh, kind of out of your control, then Way of the Pacifist is probably not for you. For the most part, it's perfectly feasible to nail it on the first try though. I have one really minor problem with the checkpoints. Why are they all a pull bar that you need to walk over to and actually hit a button to use? There's a whole animation that annoys the crap out of me when it could have just been activated automatically. I could see like if skipping a checkpoint rewarded you somehow, uh, for example in Shovel Knight where you can destroy the checkpoint for money. I really wish Way of the Passive Fist would have the checkpoint activate by just walking by. There's no reason to have all of this extra fluff surrounding it. Anyway, there is extra content rewarded after finishing the campaign. New Dawn contains five new stages and a roguelike mode which must be played on maximum difficulty. I want to commend the dev for adding this free update to the game that allows players who love it to continue endlessly. I do wish it wasn't locked behind the campaign though, I don't, I don't see why it is. Look, I want to celebrate Way of the Passive Fist for just how unique it is. There's nothing else exactly like this that I've ever played, and I really appreciate the game. It has a great idea and it's executed pretty well. That said, it's not going to be for everyone, and it's going to be a push for some to get through the slow beginning. But for those gamers that like precise controls and enjoy a fairly difficult game, then give this one a chance. It's definitely above average and I had fun playing it. Thanks for watching.